Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. I have some exciting, exciting news to share with you today and I kind of put off making this episode for at least a couple of weeks until I was 100% sure that this wasn't going to fall through. So what I'm going to announce today is that I am going to be doing what will probably be one of the longest passages I will ever do, even when I own my own catamaran, because I've been asked by uh, exquisite catamarans out of South Africa and a brand new owner, Sean Moody, who's just bought hull number seven, I believe it is, if I would join him on his first passage across the South Atlantic, well, across the equator as well, into the Caribbean. So we're going South Africa, up to Namibia, across to St. Helena Island, up to Ascension Island, across, I think, 4,000 nautical miles to the most southern tip of the Caribbean, and then up through the Caribbean islands, across to Florida, and then eventually the final destination where Sean lives is in North Carolina. Needless to say, that is a massive, massive voyage. Crazy big. My last transatlantic last year with Paul and Cheryl Shard from Distant Shores was a little slower than expected. It took us 22 days. It should have taken maybe 14 to 17, but the wind was pretty low. It is what it is. 22 days was a long time to be at sea. Um, this is gonna dwarf that. So we're thinking it's gonna take about six weeks to get to the Caribbean and then who knows how much time we want to stop at each island along the way. I had to ask permission from work, my uh, police service, to see if I could take a leave of absence. It took a little while but eventually I got approval for that. That was one of the holdups for announcing it. And then once it was all announced, the time that we were going to leave kept changing too so I started wondering if the permission I'd asked for was still going to be valid as the, due to, or the estimated departure date kept changing later and later and later. Um, Tomas, who you saw in the episode where I do a walkthrough of this exquisite X5 last year, he did a great detailed walkthrough of the boat. I didn't redo one this year because the boat they brought to the show was an older model with less features than the newer model they showed last year. But this episode is going to be me on this slightly older model of an exquisite X5 taking it out for a test sail. Now, we really can't control the wind or the weather. This day, which you'll see in this episode, wasn't the windiest day, so it's more of a test of can a catamaran actually tack in low wind. If there's ever a complaint about catamarans is that they don't tack very well, especially in low wind compared to a monohull. But as you'll see in this episode, it does fine. It sails actually quite well in low wind. So check that out in a second. But Tomas, who you'll see in this episode, also in the one from a year ago, which was I think by far my highest viewed video, where I do the walkthrough tour of the Exquisite X5. He will be on the first uh, leg of this trip from South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa, where the boat is built, up to Namibia. He's gonna join us. He's gonna be showing us everything, all the details, ins and out of the boat. And of course, I'll be filming that. And then he's gonna get off in Namibia and we're gonna do the rest of the passage, just four of us. Sean, the owner, myself, and two other guys. Four of us doing this entire trip on our own. So it should be very exciting. And I don't think I have to worry with six weeks that I'm gonna get another passage with almost no wind. When you have such a long passage, I'm sure there's gonna be some times with some white knuckling, high waves, high winds and all that. So it should be uh, exciting. So anyways, this episode, Janice and I are at the end of the Annapolis Sailboat Show. We're introducing that we're gonna do this test sail. We don't mention that this plan of me sailing across the ocean, we don't talk about it at all because again, we were afraid it might fall through or I wouldn't get permission from work for a leave of absence. It's all done now. So anyways, check out this episode where I'll show you the Exquisite X5. It's a test sail in light winds, but rest assured there's gonna be a lot of high wind test sailing in that six weeks passage. So hopefully you enjoy. Good morning, everyone. Hi. We finished the Annapolis Sailboat Show yesterday, had a great time, watched them tear it down. Today is a new day. It is gonna be our test sail of the Exquisite X5. One of our favorite catamarans from last year and this year. And this is uh, hull number two. So we didn't do a walkthrough of this one because last season we did a very extensive walkthrough with Tomas on hull number three, which had some additions and improvements made. Uh, every time they're building new boats, they're coming up with little things that they've improved along the way. So instead of doing another walkthrough of an older hull, uh, we, we're just gonna refer you back to that other episode, put a little link in the description. But this boat is exactly the same in terms of sailing. Uh, so we're gonna test sail it today. Now, it's not exactly the windiest of days. It's certainly windier than it's been all weekend. So yeah. It's a bit of a breeze, but nothing that's going to make this thing really fly. But uh, hey, we'll get to test it in uh, relatively low wind conditions. And the sun is finally coming out. We were a little concerned it might rain, but it's looking like a beautiful hot day for October, which is great. So stay tuned. Bye. Bye. 
This is what the Exquisite X5 looks like from the outside. And we love that modern, sleek shape. That hard traveler arch at the back is also very unique. But there's a lot of technology built into the inside. You can run this entire boat from an iPad. Definitely go back and check out the episode from last year to have all that explained to you. Tomas did an excellent job of giving us a guided tour. Now I know how this goes. If I don't tell you the price and give you some specs, I get all sorts of comments below. Why didn't I say something about that? So here you go. The price for hull number eight, which I guess is done and ready for sale is $1.3 million. And all the specs on the water tanks and the fuel tanks and the engines are all listed right here on the screen. If you need to freeze it or rewind it, go back and check those out for those that want to know that sort of stuff. Now I know what you're thinking. $1.3 million. Can a retired cop and his wife afford to live on that? And the answer is no. <laughs> Not even close. Now, Janice and I watch a lot of YouTube where people are traveling the world with a dog. And we always think, what, would we do that? And then we come up with the conclusion, no way, it's way too much work. But this dog would probably win me over because it is so damn cute. Puppy Boo likes Craig. And your friend. So snuggly. And your friend. So cute. So enough about the cute dog. Let's check out this protected back cockpit. That big long bench seat at the back is actually a lounge and the each end can angle up so you can have a really comfortable ride. Check out exhibit A, Sarah, Tomas's wife, and the dog just chill in while we're under motor. Can you imagine eating at this table? Beautiful. Lots of areas for your friends and family to sit and lounge while you're underway. Doing things? Oh, look who's there. Hi. Okay. Filming. <laughs> So with Janice having her camera on a gimbal and me having the bigger camera on my gimbal, it was time to push off from the dock and uh, check out this boat when it's sailing. You might have noticed this already. I have some spots on my lens. That's not permanent. I must have gotten caught in that little light rain we got before we got on the boat on the lens. Didn't notice it. And now they're stuck there forever. Note to self, when I'm crossing an ocean in inclement weather, always wipe off your lens. Luckily, we have Janice's camera as well. So we have that footage, which is better, not as spotty, and also better audio from that camera. So I'll use that footage whenever possible. Although when you're motoring into the wind like we are now, you're never gonna get good audio because of the wind noise and whatnot. It gets better when we start sailing. So as you'll notice, the Exquisite has hard lifelines, firm, very secure and solid. And there's a boarding ladder that I didn't notice before on the side there, which is awesome. Look, mom, no hands. So what Tomas is doing here is he's raising the sail with the electric winch by running it with his toe. The button is put down there for a reason, so you don't even need to put down your drink while raising your sail. Fun stuff. Okay, so let me see that the main is up. Very simple, let the topping lift out. What he's showing us here is after the sails are up and everything's the right tension, you can get rid of all those ropes and lines by sticking them in the floor. Pretty cool. No more tripping. We're in the channel here. So it's a river where we are. It's the South River. So we're in the channel, so we don't have much space to maneuver. That's why we don't have a very good angle to the wind yet. But once we get a little further out, somewhere here we have enough space that we're going to start tacking and I show you different sails, how they work. Okay? Excellent. Yep. I'm just going to voice over a lot of what Tomas said because the wind noise was out of control. He's showing us that the instruments that are over here on the right on the new setup is over in the middle and then he pulls out a photo to show us what the new setup is. As you can see the screen is bigger and brighter. The throttle moves over to the left side then all those other instruments that are sort of behind you are now in front of you. It's just a much better setup. I think we see that in the episode from last year when he had uh, hull number four I believe at the show. Get, uh, electronic throttle controls instead of the, the, the cable controls we did it before. And what else changes? And we fit a nice composite steering wheel. It's a bigger diameter, thicker. It's a nice uh, head. It's, it's mainly, uh, you know, the aesthetics of right. the boat. It looks really nice. Yeah. Big, uh, big uh, composite wheel. Obviously, you have uh, uh, autopilot control and uh, you have another Garmin to, to see all, all your information from the network. And we fit uh, this, we fit it before as well. We have it again. It's the Garmin grid. In case the touchscreen gets wet, salt water sprays on it, your hands are wet, it's not sometimes the, the, the touchscreen doesn't work very well. So the as standard fit this backup control is the choice. It gives you full control to the uh, display, uh, same as you would have with the touch display. Drink holders, of course, and the compass. And on this side, you have some of the switches that we, it's all on digital switching. So you could switch everything from the Garmin. You could just go on the Garmin screen and, and switch and monitor your tanks or switch any lights on and off. But some of the switches that we thought it's important, we put it up here. Right. So you don't need to like change the screen, go into it. For example, the, the 
the bird glides on the deck. So when you're sailing at night and you're changing sails and you just want to look up what's going on, you don't have to go to change screen, you just uh, hit like, the bird glides yeah. and you see all the you know the deck plots, so you see how the sails are doing, or your engine lights, just hit on it, jump in and see the engine lights come up, you see what's going on. Yeah, very good. Also, obviously, the, the important things like bilge pumps and this kind of things. Also, have engine battery parallels, meaning, uh, let's say, one of your engine batteries, starter batteries, fails for any reason. You don't even have to move to the engine room. You can just push this button, motorized switch, uh, uh, parallels into the starter battery, so you can start one engine from the other. And then there's another one, if, you, if both of your starter batteries are dead for some reason, then you can still parallel into your house bank and start your engines from the house bank. Yeah. Yeah, so that's very good. We have USB, a couple of USB connectors, and travel connectors if you need to plug in stuff. Lots of people use, you know, additional to navigation, iPads, or iPads, yeah. etc. Like I said in last year's detailed review, Tomas is excellent at showing you all the features, and boy, they really do think of everything, and they are very technologically advanced. I'm very impressed. What Tomas is showing us here is that all the lines lead back to the helm to electric winches, so you don't need to do anything manually if you don't want to, other than, of course, let a line out. You are in a protected area. You've got a hard front windshield and you've got a bimini over top of you, so you're very protected. In fact, the newer hulls have an even bigger bimini that sticks out further to your left, so there's no chance of rain coming in at an angle and getting you wet. They are making improvements on each hull as they go. They keep finding something they could make slightly better. When I go across the ocean, I'll be on hull number seven. This is hull number two we're on here. Hull number seven's got a big improvement. The hard bimini that goes off over top of the covered back salon or cockpit is even longer and has inlaid solar panels. So that's a big improvement. He's going to tell us why he put 80 horsepower engines in each hull. Some might think that's overkill because it's much bigger than most boat builders put in, but here's why. 80 horsepower Yamaha engines and, and, and uh, when we won the boat of the year, they were the most silent boats of all of them and they measured the, the sound levels of the engines. You can do at 1800 RPM, uh, you already do 7 knots. Yeah, but when you need it sometimes, you know, with yeah. even channels, when you have 4 knots of current against you, yeah. you need one entrance plus 20 knots of wind. You want to be over revving your engine, right? Now you got you, stronger engine, you, you don't need to over rev. I had it on one of my previous boats, I was full throttle, both engines in the channel, it was in the South Pacific, one of the atolls, and full throttle, whatever I could do, I was going one knot going into the channel because um, I need not enough power for that condition. Yeah. So we rather put the large engines and, and even if you don't use all the time, you just have to burn out sometimes, rev up the engines, you know, to burn out the residues. But uh, you can run them low RPM, sometimes burning them out. And then they don't, don't uh, use much fuel. Yeah. Janice has found her favorite spot whenever we're on a catamaran and that's sitting on the princess seat at the very bow. She's filming around on the deck and as you can see, there is tons of lazarette space. I'm standing on some lazarettes. There's more lazarettes in front of that, and then even more lazarettes in front of that. The offset is you get a slightly smaller trampoline, but who doesn't want more storage, right? Here is the view as you walk along the deck back towards the cockpit. We love the aesthetics of this rounded arch. It gives a little support to the bimini, the hard bimini, and the traveler area. And now that the hull number seven has an even longer bimini, it's probably great to have that support. Also gives you something to hold on to when you're stepping down. We also like the aesthetics and the feel of this faux teak decking. It's kind of rubberized, so you don't have to stain it or sand it or do any of that, but it's comfortable on the feet. You have your dinghy davits that's built right into the boat. And of course that big, nice area to sit at the back. You can see that black padding in the roof. That's actually the drop down enclosure. It is included in the price and that gets you out of the sun and maybe it zips down in case there's bugs. This is almost a must have feature if you're gonna live on your catamaran because one thing that kills you is being out in the sun all day and being able to drop down some curtains for some shade would be a welcome benefit. You're about to meet David. Him and his wife Peggy own this boat and they've been sailing it for years. We're also gonna complain a bit about how when we want to test sail, there's absolutely no wind. Yeah, we saw the forecast this morning. And of course we're, we have it in, Metric because we're Canadian, but it's at nine kilometers an hour, which I'm like, well, you you would know. You're probably yeah, metric I mean, in your country, right? It's it's eight nine kilometer right now. Yeah. Seven eight. Yeah. It's less than it even said, which was already low. So. We do have a hurricane coming up. I know this okay. is the lull before so, the storm. So let's stick around. Yeah, we could stick around. <laughs> <laughs> White water coming off. The back. <laughs> What's the fastest you've ever had it sailing, like I came on a consistent into speed? Charleston last year with a 25 knot wind behind me. I had well, I was wing to wing, and my apparent wind was 12 knots because right. there was no pressure on the mast because we were doing 13 knots. That's amazing. And and we got up on top of waves and just it was a 
smooth ride, five foot seas, and we were flying. Yeah. But he's not, he's saying that he wasn't surfing 30 knots, it was sustained yeah. speed. We went yeah. that way for 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And no pressure on the mass because it was only a 12 knot apparent. Apparent, yeah. So you're not overtaxing things. That's amazing. On, on, we, we did a sea trial in Cape Town, you know, like, what if we push the boat to limits and see what it does? And I do not recommend that. No. <laughs> we like that factory. We, this is a factory tested yeah, boat. sales guys on board yeah. just when the boat was launched. We had the rigging guys, you know, Sparcraft on board. We got everybody from our team as well. And we got the boat up to 18 knots. But it was like above where you should be already reefing. And so what we did, we didn't reef. Right. Early we just said, we were seeing, you know, how the rig. Uh, the hull the, dynamics the, yeah, and that. And, all. and everything. And, yeah. and she was up 18 knots. We were almost like lifting the whole a little bit out of <laughs> yeah. the water. said, so, okay, this is cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's not what you're supposed to do with this boat. But she's super comfortable, long trips. Uh, this same boat, two years ago, we sold it uh, to, to the Peggy and Dave at the Annapolis Boat Show. And then they asked us if we could deliver it for them to Florida. So it was only my wife and I. So we sailed down the boat and we did a pretty much, we had good wind and it was a nice passage. We did 11, 12 knots most of the way, most of the way. It was a really nice trip. It is really nice. But uh, on long range, long distance cruising, I would say you can easily calculate a nine knots, eight, nine knots, because she sails really, really well. People yeah. are all surprised how well the boat sails. I, I wish I could show you. <laughs> yeah, you can only do what you can, right? No wind. But the fact that you're not stopped in such low wind yeah, is, is, we, is we saying something. Turn either in that, yeah, that's we'll one. see. I mean, we're doing now 1.9 knots, 1.9. I'm not sure if you can be able to turn, but I can give it a try. But if we stall, I don't know. We'll edit that out. Because <laughs> it's, I mean, we literally... Not a fair, yeah. We're doing 1.9 yeah. knots. None, of the, none said, of the production <laughs> cats like Lagoons would be tacking in this low wind. So okay, if you one, can't, then... 1.9 knots, and yeah. it's auto tack. So let's see if we can okay. do this. All right. Okey okay. Now you film him, I'll film this. 1.8 knots. Coming about. Jib's getting backwinded. Still turning. If the jib catches you going, you're good. Oh, it's coming. You're going to make it. Yeah. You're still coming across. Yeah, you didn't stall. It didn't stall. Nope. Now we're off the other side. It just took no wind. Yeah, but the, yeah, you didn't go in. You didn't get stuck in the irons, right? four knots of wind. And right now we went to one knot, one, one knot speed. So we slowed down to one knot, but we still did. You, you passed through it. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So yeah, if you really, really don't want to use your engines, you could you could do it, even if four knots of wind. I mean, that's amazing. That's that's quite amazing, and that's very that's I mean that's the best thing I can show now, really, because that speaks for the the boat's agility to to maneuver and turn, and that kind of already tells you what it would do if there would be yeah. a more wind. Yeah. Of course, we have to ask Dave what he loves about having a catamaran over a monohull, and uh, it's something we already knew, but always good to hear. The best part is you can drink. You can put your drink down. Yeah. And you turn around, it's still there. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I said that so many times during my transatlantic passage there. I go, I, I just can't believe how comfortable this is. We're looking, we're doing 10 and a half, 11 knots, and, and they're inside talking and, and drinking and putting their coffee cups down and walking away, going to the washroom, coming back, everything's still there. And we're like, we're moving along, like on a, on a monohull. If you're doing yeah. 11, 12 knots, yeah, on a you're monohull, you're heeled way over, over, everything's flying and around. It's like, <laughs> Neck yeah. yeah. Oh. Space. We try to put up the reacher. The problem with the reacher is four knots of wind in one hole because it needs at least 60 degrees apparent wind. And the problem is the wind is so little. In the moment we're going to start to move, our apparent wind is going to go towards forward. your front. Yeah. And then and then it will stall the sail. So so in four knots of wind, the reacher won't move for the work. Yeah. We didn't really think there'd be enough wind to have the screecher really work. But you know what what does it cost to try, right? So we put it out just to see what would happen, and boy, are we impressed that we did, because the boat started sailing really quick in this tiny bit of wind. There we go. Very good sign. So let's see the best we can do. You know what, though? I mean, we have a we have a monohull, we have a Beneteau, and in five knots of wind, we'd almost be standing still, because our boat our boat has got you know in mass. Yeah, the sail mo hangs like a curtain. Not that big, so in five knots, we bear we're doing. Like, we're lucky if we get one knot. So you're doing well. It's a big boat. I mean, that's now look at it. Now we got six six knots true wind. We're already over three. 
and we're going to do better. We always do better. We, with seven knots true wind, uh, we got up to five knots. So, but if you start just that five knots where we have the limit here, we start moving. Now it's six knots true, we already three and a half. So we start getting speed. You feel it, right? Yeah, exactly. This is what we need. You need at least six, seven knots to move the boat nice. That's a decent. That's a decent. Yeah, like that's, now you can hear the water going by. Oh la la. Yeah. Okay, we're almost in four knots now. Ooh. Speed. With true wind, 6.5, and we're doing four knots. That's, that's, that's 6.5. That's pretty, pretty impressive. And I can feel more breeze. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. yeah. Just oh. with a little, little pop. Yeah. And all the maneuvers we did, we never stalled. No. no. I didn't have the engines on no. since we left. No. Sure. I think that's quite impressive. Yeah. yeah. It's like with this luxury. Because I, I really stuff. like not having engines on. Yeah, if you're wife, not in a rush. My wife lives for no, no engines. Yeah. yeah. This is where I'm at. Peace okay. and quiet. Okay, you can film these guys because it, it, it speaks for itself, okay? So you hear, see here the true wind speed, five knots, okay? From 90 degrees. We have the apparent wind at five, six from from uh, 70 degrees and with five knots we're doing almost four you see the gps speed here if you see here apparent wind uh, is six and the gps speed three eight but the true wind is lower a little bit true wind is 5.5 only so in 5.5 true wind we're doing four knots that's very very good so that shows an efficient hull and yeah. I mean, efficient shape and, and the, the fact that like i said the fact that you were able to to tack and jibe in home almost no wind yeah that's pretty impressive that's the one, the one downside that a lot of people say about catamarans is that you can't tack them in low wind, right? I mean, you see yeah. what we did. Yeah. You see what we did. And what, now we're doing four knots. I mean, doing four knots in this. In, in an almost windless day. 5.6 true wind. Yeah. I'll just pan around so, to show you. There's no, there's no, no white caps, no waves, nothing. So we are definitely on a very, very calm day. In fact, every other sailboat that's gone by is just motoring. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the wake is starting to build a little yeah. bit of wake. Yeah. You can see the water. You stay there, I'll go. And we start oh. moving a little bit. Okay, do this. Oh, yeah. So we're doing, again, four knots in, in only five and a half knots true wind with a fully loaded boat. So it has uh, the holding tanks, which has mm -hmm. stuff in it. The boiler tanks are almost full. We have a half tank fuels pretty much, a, a big dinghy up uh, hanging on the dates mm -hmm. and all their cruising gear on board. Yeah. They full time live aboard. Live so aboard. they have all their stuff, the water toys, the inflatable kayaks, paddle board and, and bicycles, whatever is all stored up front in the storages. So, yeah. so it's a fully cruising, very loaded boat and still doing this speed and yeah. sport performance. performance. That's, that speak for itself. Yeah. Because we would definitely have a lot of stuff on our boat. Yeah. We're going to be like... Scuba you're, tanks, we're, we're gonna here, paddle boards, bicycles. So. Now you were talking earlier, uh, and it was off camera, that your plan in, in the future for it is to, to just make the boats with all the options that everybody seems to ask for anyway. Just include that as part of the... We, we're trying to... I, I don't like that then, then people come to ask how much the boat costs and then and then you start at a low base price and then you pay for the generator, the water maker, yeah. uh, air conditioning, not just air conditioning, even a cabin fan or a shade in the window is an option. I just don't like that, that, that setup. So 30 years ago or 20 years ago, uh, an electric car window was an option in a car. Now you can buy one without it. So who would buy a 50 foot boat without like air conditioning, a washer dryer, a water maker, an electric a solar panel, electric <laughs> toilets, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, like who would do that? So you would need all that stuff on board. So yeah. my, my plan is really just even more than what we do yeah, now. Yeah, you already do that now. We right? already do, but, but we still have some options. So a couple of things like scuba compressor, satellite communication could be up, but, but like Wi-Fi and GSM and, and like a, a, an iridium system should be standard because everybody who buys a boat like this will be cruising. Yeah. So they will need all those systems. I'm trying to integrate even more and more standard equipment to reduce the optional equipment to the minimum. Right. So guys, it's getting really shallow and time. So my thinking is that we just get the sails down mm -hmm. and then water back. Are you? Sounds yeah, good. There's not much more. I sounds can show excellent. You now. Nope. So, so we again, now we're just gonna furl in the sail. It was easy. Now that we are into the wind, we drop the main right here. So dropping the main sail again, very simple. What you do is autopilot. You put it on wind hold. So it's going zero degrees to the wind. Okay, we can slow down a little bit. And then now we have to take out all the line that we put away. 
main halliers. Just put it around a couple of times, pull it off so it's easy to open the locker. You put the traveler back in the center because we let out the topping lid. So obviously now you want to tighten the topping lid so when you drop your sail, you can hold the boom and now we can go with the main. Now I like to give a little speed now because that makes sure that the autopilot has good control to keep it straight into the wind yeah. and meaning that it's going to drop straight into the bag right. and then you don't have to go up there, you don't have to build with it. So here we go. You just control it, so there's no strength involved in that either. You really just drop it. Make sure everything goes. There we go. Here we go. Straight into the bag. Yeah. Ta da! Didn't touch the laser yet. Quite easy, no? Yes, straight in. Let's Didn't touch go. anything. So, I mean, you guys, sailors, you realize what's this. Yeah. How yeah. Easy yep. Is. So, let's head home then, okay? Yeah, for sure. Alrighty. Thanks a lot. Now, as you can see, this is one beautiful boat. These sugar scoops are nice and wide to get in and out of the water. That's great. That dinghy davits that's built right in is an awesome feature. And I wanted to mention, you've seen quite a bit of the outside of the boat during this kind of test trial, and you might wonder why we never went in and checked out the galley or any of that stuff. Well, A, it's an older model, so last year's episode was probably uh, better because it had a few more features. B, uh, Peggy, who you don't really see in this episode, was working from the boat. These, This couple actually, they're not retired. They both kind of work from the boat. It'd be great to have a job that you could do that. <laughs> Go anywhere in the world, as long as you have internet access, you can keep working. So she was inside working, and I really didn't want to disturb her by walking around with my camera and filming her while she's at work. So I did not go inside the boat. If you want to see a model with a few more features, check out last year's episode, or wait till I do my big, long six-week passage on haul number seven, and you're going to see one with even more features. So stay tuned for that. As you can see, Janice has found her favorite perch when we're underway on a catamaran. She calls it the princess seat. Time to party. <laughs> okay, so what I want to show what we do now is a comfort package. We put a, a big custom shade that covers up this entire bow area, the foredeck, when you're in it, when you're in an anchorage. And then we put out bean bags and have the speakers up on the mast as you hear. Yeah. Forward. So this creates so a cool larger area there. in the front when you when you're arrive to an acreage. But because this is a, a, a real blue water cruiser, the whole plan is when you're going to make a, a passage, an offshore passage, you just take this down and put it away. We got storage for all the bean bags, all the chairs, all this shade, everything everything neatly hides away. And you can safely do a passage because it's all clear the, the foredeck. But when you arrive to an anchorage and want to be there like a week or a day, whatever, you just put the whole thing back up. And then you have a full, the whole becomes a full Party deck. down to the area. Very nice. There's a nice stuff. Yeah. I, that's very nice. And we weren't nice expecting that. Below everywhere, and they always get salt water spray. They damage very quickly. Yes. And that's just the best spot for them. Yeah, it's excellent. And then you have different area zones in the studio. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's controlled by the iPad or from yeah. the phone. Mm -hmm. So you can control music from here. And each area you can individually control the volume. So you yeah. have music only here but not inside. Yeah. Inside, if somebody's in there, you have yeah. things in there. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Well now it's kind of beautiful out. The sun has yeah, finally decided to join us. <sighs> the dog is in the lap of luxury. Unfortunately, our beautiful day out on the water had to come to an end. The couple that actually owns it wanted to get the hell out of Dodge before that hurricane started hitting the area, so there was a bit of a time crunch. But yeah, I can't wait to spend six weeks on a boat just as nice as this. Now, in order to do this long voyage, I needed to ask for time off work, which is a leave of absence, no pay. It, yeah, kind of hurt a little bit. But to cover some of the costs of this trip for me, I have A, my patrons that have been around, and that is like crowdfunding, sort of people that just say, I like what you do, and every time you do a video, I want to give you coffee money or beer money or whatever you want to call it. If you're interested in doing that to help support the channel, that'd be great. Go to patreon.com slash cruisingoffduty. But new to this is Tomas has some boat parts manufacturers that, you know, or go into every one of his boats. He talked to them, and some of them want to get on board and also support this voyage for me to cover the costs. And that's great, so I want to thank them as well. 
As a special thanks to the patrons who've been supporting the channel, I want to give them a little extra. So every time I'm anywhere, whether it's South Africa or any of the islands where I can get some Wi-Fi, I'm going to do a little video update about how the passage is going so far. These won't be fully edited episodes. Those will happen when the passage is finally done and I have time to edit all this footage. But these little updates will be like one shot, just turn on the camera, tell everybody how things are going and then send it on through Wi-Fi. So yeah, patrons will be able to get that extra footage. So yeah, one more reason to become a patron. And lastly, I want to mention that we're planning to do a live episode. This live episode is going to be where you guys can ask us, me and Janice, questions about this planned trip I'm going on and what Janice thinks of all this. And also we're going to talk about uh, all the boats at the Annapolis Sailboat Show and what we liked at the top of our list. You know, we kind of put them in order based on category. So if you're interested in that, look forward to an upcoming episode. It'll be live, but also once it's done, it'll be recorded for anybody who wants to watch it in the future. If you found this episode entertaining or informative, show the channel some love and give it a thumbs up. That always helps us out. So until next time, this is Craig and Janice wishing you safe cruising.